Welcome to Lesson 2A, Fun with Tensor Notation. In this lesson, we'll do some fun stuff with tensor notation. We'll discuss the divergence of a vector, a tensor, and even a dyad. I'll show you how to prove a vector identity in tensor notation. And then I'll show you how to express the general Gauss theorem in tensor notation. First, let's consider divergence of a vector. Recall from a previous lesson, the divergence of a vector is the dot product of del dot vector, in this case u. I showed you how to write this in tensor notation as del ui del xi. Now consider the divergence of a second order tensor. In vector notation we express this as del dot t, where t is the second order tensor. We can write this out in formal tensor notation as unit vector ei del del xi dotted with tjk, unit vectors ej and ek, where what I call formal tensor notation includes these unit vectors. We can use the product rule just like we're used to using. So we have ei dot del tjk del xi times ej ek plus del del xi ej ek tjk. You can add parentheses for clarification here. The product rule basically takes this derivative operating on this term times this term plus the derivative of the other term times the first term, just like you learned in calculus class. But these unit vectors are not a function of space, so the spatial derivative of any unit vectors is zero. Next, when we write this out in formal tensor notation, the t, j, k is just the scalar component of the tensor and is not affected by the dot product, so this term can come outside the dot product. So we write it this way. But from a previous lesson, this is equal to delta i, j. So we write it like this. But in this grouping of terms, we have a repeated i and a repeated j with a delta, so we can contract by setting i equal j. In other words, this term is non-zero only when i equal j. So this becomes del t j k del x j e k. So our answer in formal tensor notation is this. I point out that when you have a dot product like this, it applies only to these two vectors, not this one. It kind of goes along for the ride. In what I call simplified tensor notation, we drop the unit vectors, and I write it this way. In formal tensor notation, the ek tells us that this is a vector quantity, and the equal sign is valid. Here, remember, we don't use an equal sign. Instead, I use an arrow, meaning these two are representative of each other, or this implies this, or vice versa. Here, j is repeated, and k is a free index, implying that this is a vector. As you get more used to tensor notation, You'll recognize this del del xj as the del operator, and tjk as a second order tensor, and the summation over j as a dot product. Notice that del dot u became a scalar. We reduced the rank of this vector u by 1, making it a scalar. Similarly, the divergence of this second order tensor is a vector, and we reduced the rank of t by 1. You can keep going to any order tensor. So the divergence of a tensor always reduces the rank by 1. For example, consider the divergence of a dyad, del dot AB, where A and B are both vectors. We write the del this way in formal tensor notation, the A this way, and the B this way. But again, these E's are not affected by this derivative, so we can take them outside the derivative. So I collected all the scalar components here and the vector components here. Again, this dot product applies only on the leftmost vector here. So we rearrange it this way. Again, we recognize delta ij. Now we can contract on the aj and the delta ij, making this an ai. This is our answer in formal tensor notation. Since a dyad is a second order tensor, this divergence gives us a vector as indicated by this e. In simple tensor notation, del dot ab is represented as del del xi aibk where again we've simply dropped the unit vector ek. The ek, by the way, is implied by this free index k. Let's do an example. You may remember or not remember this vector identity that we used when deriving the Bernoulli equation. u dot del u equal del of u squared over 2 minus u cross del cross u, which by the way is the vorticity vector omega. For an irrotational flow, this term goes to 0. And that's why you get the magnitude of velocity squared over 2 term in the Bernoulli equation. Let's take this vector identity as our given. Let's prove it in tensor notation. 
First, let's rearrange and start writing this out in formal tensor notation. The left-hand side becomes UL, EL, crossed with epsilon IJK, del UJ del XI, EK, where this term is the vorticity vector written in tensor notation. Since I used IJ and K here, I used L here. I rearrange as UL, del UJ del XI, epsilon IJK, EL cross EK. Again, keeping in mind that operators like a cross product affect only these unit vectors, not these components in tensor notation. So I put those outside the cross product. Well, this term is epsilon L K M E M, which is how we express a cross product in tensor notation from a previous lesson. Now I'm going to shift the K over by one place. And remember, that gives us a negative sign. So I rewrite it this way. The reason I did that was because this is now in the form where we can use the epsilon delta relation. After application of the epsilon delta relation, we can write the left hand side like this. We can easily expand this out to get this where I took out the negative sign and put this term first and this term second with the negative sign. But the repeated i with the delta im allows us to contract, in other words set i equal m. Similarly, we see a repeated L with the delta JL, which we can contract by setting J equal L. We can choose either the J or the L. I chose the J. And here we can choose either the I or the M. I chose the M, since I have an EM here. Similarly, we can contract the L's here and the J's here, where we set I equal L. I chose I. And we set J equal M. And I chose M. And we have our EM. The next step is a little bit tricky. We work the product rule in reverse or backwards. Del del xm of uj uj equal uj del uj del xm plus the same term since these two are the same. So this is the product rule in the forward direction and we get 2uj del uj del xm. But remember that uj uj is the magnitude of u squared which you may be used to writing this way. I rewrote the left hand side and now this equation when we substitute for this term with this term, and we get 1 half del del xm of uj uj from here with our em, and then minus this term. But to be socially acceptable, I'll use my repeated index as j instead of i to agree with this term. Now apply this. We recognize this first term as the gradient of the scalar u squared over 2, and the second term as u dot del operating on u. And this is exactly what we started out with here, just rewritten this way. So we've proved this vector identity using tensor notation. I would have a hard time proving this while staying in vectors. Although it's tedious, it's straightforward to prove this in tensor notation. Wasn't that fun? I wouldn't exactly call it fun, dude. Yeah, that's about as fun as giving a cat a bath <laughs> or watching icicles melt. Maybe not fun, but certainly intense. Yeah, dude. Intense tensor notation. <laughs> <laughs> now let's look at the general Gauss theorem, which some people call the Gauss law or the Gaussian law. It's also called the divergence theorem. For some vector q, we integrate over the volume, del dot q d volume, equal the integral over the area. This is a surface integral, and the circle means we're integrating over the entire surface area that defines this volume. And we integrate q dot dA. If this is our volume, dA is the outward normal area element with unit vector n. In tensor notation, and I'll use simplified tensor notation here, we have the volume integral, del dot q is del qi del xi dV equal the area integral of the dot product qi dAi where the i's are repeated because of the dot products. Some textbooks may write this as dAi equal nIdA. This is the Gauss law for a vector in tensor notation. But, and here is where it gets a little more fun, we are not restricted to vectors. We can write a general Gauss law or theorem for a tensor of any rank. Namely, if we let Q be a tensor of any rank, volume integral of del Q del xi dV is equal to the integral over the whole surface area of q d a i. This q can be anything, a scalar, a vector, second order tensor, an nth order tensor, and this equation is still valid. This general Gauss law will become very useful to us in later lessons. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.